What is going on, guys? Samuel One World from Samuel One. Here, 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 here. Back with a top 10 list for you all today. And it would be the year end season. And in a couple days, I will have my other lists I'll be doing, like my disappointing, underrated, surprising worst, and my overall best. I feel like that's going to 2023. I'm going to talk about the 10 films next year that I'm excited for the most. Now, you guys have some of the couple of years I recently did. You guys know that 2023 was, 2022 was a rough year in terms of my personal life, a rough year mentally for me. Like I did do a video where I pretty much explained everything I went through this year. But in spite of everything, I was still able to keep, actually, surprisingly keep up with not the amount of movies that came out and the movies I watched and reviewed. And this has been a pretty interesting year for movies, as I was sure. And I'm good at that, but. I realized that the last couple years I really haven't done an actual much anticipated films on next year. Mostly because, again, life kind of got in the way of that, so I didn't really have the energy to do so. So, I think I make up that by doing it this year. And, and when it comes to like franchises now, doing 2020 looks like it's going to be an incredibly stacked year of movies. But when it comes to like sequels and popular franchises and everything, like it's going to be a really stacked year in general. And, it's going to be interesting to see how a lot of movies really stack up, and I'm definitely very excited for a lot of these movies. But one of the 10 ones that I am personally am excited for the most, well, that is what we're going to talk about today. The 10 movies that, in my opinion, I am excited for the most. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys, and I would love to know your most anticipated movies as well. Even your most anticipated shows or games down below in the comments. It doesn't like any show next year I'm anticipating the most next year. It definitely will be the last of its TV series on, H on HBO. Just in the games, I will probably worth say the new Super Smash Bros. keep coming out, but because it's from Rocksteady, I believe, and it's the last time we see Kevin Conroy as Batman, but let's talk about the 10 movies that, in my opinion, I am looking forward to the most. Excited! Excited! But before we do get to the actual top 10, let's discuss the honorable. The 10 honorable mentions of movies that I'm excited for, they just not quite make the list. And those films are Knock at the Cabin, the latest film from M. Night Shyamalan. Despite his last film not being the greatest, I'm excited for anything he does, and this likes to be an interesting concept. Magic Mike's Last Dance. Interesting looking at the Magic Mike movie, but I'm definitely curious to see what I'm going to do with this one. Way to Pooh, Bother Honey. Yes, I'm actually very curious to see how they're going to do with this version of Wayne the Pooh. Yes, I am actually. I'm curious about that, I'm not gonna lie. I think anyone's playing curious about this. Shazam! Fury of the Gods. What if I should make the list? If not the fact that DC is pretty much dead in the water, honestly, with everything they're going through and the restructuring, which kind of makes this and the next few other movies, The Flash, Blue Beetle, and Aquaman Unlost Kingdom, kind of pointless to be honest, but if I put the one I'm excited for the most next year, it would be Shazam too, because I did love the first Shazam. The Little Mermaid remake. Yes, I'm actually curious to how they're going to do this interpretation of The Little Mermaid. Evil Dead Rise and Scream 6. Two high anticipated sequels from two of my of my favorite horror franchises and from a guy from the I've seen for these movies. Looks like we're going to get two more hits in these franchises. The Marvels. Again, it's kind of Marvel is one of the films I thought was Solid, but not the one of the best MCU movies. Just, but I'm very curious, hoping that this will be the film that action. they do cut the Marvel right here, because I feel they haven't really got it right, honestly. And plus, again, Miss Marvel here as well, so we shall see how it goes. The Super Mario Brothers movie. Still not getting a Chris Pratt's Mario, but this movie looks like it's going to be a great, solid adaptation and a favorite adaptation, mind you, of the Mario franchise, which Get me excited for it. And the last I'll mention the film that just missed this list, Dungeons and Dragons are no among thieves. Looks like we actually might get a good D D movie because it looks like Ash is gonna be well fun and engaging and got a good cast involved, so Definitely, yeah. I'm set for those movies, they just did not make the actual list. So let's not get to the actual list, shall we? Kicking off the top ten is Fast X. Just note, this is going to be the first of many sequels again. Like some before, 2020 is like it's going to be you filled with stacked sequels, honestly, which can tell you a little about Hollywood, but 
these are at least ones that actually are exciting and from very popular franchises and franchises that actually are good. So, and for me, I actually do enjoy the Fast and Furious franchise. Like, some of them I enjoy more than others, obviously. Like, the last one I, I did enjoy, but it's definitely not one of my favorites in the franchise, fortunately. But I'm definitely curious, guys. This is going to be the first part of two, which is going to be the last film in the franchise. Yes. Well, they haven't got any like trailers or any footage yet. Again, you get got cast returning itself again. Not just going to look like, at the first part of two and, and the last uh, of the last films in the franchise. We just want to be a person one put but you obviously going to get more of that dumb, crazy mayhem fun that you've passed in the franchise, which is kind of what I normally enjoy from this series, honestly. And plus, you got apologies and more being the villain here as well. Makes it a little more interesting. Again, I'm telling that probably enjoys this movie a little more than I probably should ever be honest, but. But yeah, I'm definitely excited. Coming in number nine, we got another sequel, and that is John Wick Chapter Four. And now, it's not a secret that the John Wick movies I think are fantastic. Like the first three are some of the best action movies to come out in recent years. And that's from the amazing scene Keanu Reeves beat back in the spotlight again. But the fact that again, they're just fantastic action movies with killer choreography, great fight, gun sequences, and uh, at the same time having a very compelling world and. To explore and still a lot of things that's interesting to explore and compelling, honestly. I'm not sure it was necessary that for us to have like a four John Wick movies, depending how John everything happened John Chapter 3 that was set to this being the last one. With the with the recent trailers they got, we're really looking to get another fantastic entry with more of the great world building and more of the incredible action sequences and the incredible fight sequence that you would expect from this franchise, so count me in. Next, number eight. Eight, 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 eight. We have Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning Part One. Another part one of a two-part ent entry. Like again, that's probably the franchise is one of the franchises that definitely can with, with his with the last few entries got like a huge spike in popularity for a lot of reasons. Because and like, I love the franchise honestly. Like, the first one's great. So, like, I, I, I think the second one honestly, I pretty much love all of these films honestly. Even the third and first one honestly, which I think are massively underrated. But I think after the fourth one, people are starting to take this franchise very seriously, with, especially with how crazy the action sequences can get and how insane Tom Cruise is really to perform just to entertain the audience. Like, see what you will, Tom Cruise is a person, but you cannot deny his craft and his dedication. How do you do this one in his 50s? It's even more impressive. Again, he doesn't have a question of things as a person, that's for sure, but as an actor, you cannot deny his dedication. And what, from that little version we saw of him preparing for his son, definitely confirms that. I feel like we're going to get another bombastic film, another crazy action film run that, well, to have to some great characters and a compelling story. Again, this is part one of two, mind you. And it's that it's also going to be the last time we're going to see Tom Cruise as his character, or the last one in this series, if I'm not mistaken. I did, I think, I can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think something along the lines of that. So that's going to make this film even more interesting to watch. So yeah, they're excited to see another exciting and awesome entry in this franchise. At the number seven, we got another sequel. Again, this franchise is pretty much under one entry. This list is pretty much full of sequels, which can tell, again, can tell you about the state of Hollywood, but... Mm, you do. But at number seven, we have Dune Part Two. And now again, like that one, I was definitely. I think the first Dune was definitely a very excitable film for a lot of people because it's done in Didi Villeneuve, who is definitely one of the most unique directors working today. And I mean that in a good way. Like honestly, all his films are considered to be like top tier movies. Honestly, like like *The Prisoners*, *Arrival*, and *Pillars 49* are my all-time favorite movies. Then. Dude, what's in my top 10 best movies of 2021? And a lot of people were back and hoping that we would get a part 2, and then when it was announced, people, when it was announced, when it actually did good at the box office, it was awesome that we would get an actual continu and any continuation of the Dude franchise. Of this first, of the first film, which again, despite his long length and everything, he felt like a building world with interesting characters and a great thing to explore, and they're going to explore a lot more of that in part two. Quite like got um, some a lot of the same cast, even some new characters here. It's going to make this movie even more sad than like a true experience and event. And honestly, it better new we trust. 
Now, at number 666, we have Creed 3. Now, this is going to be an interesting entry in the series for two reasons. One, this is the first Rocky franchise, Rocky film in the series that doesn't have Rocky in it. It's going to send it more towards, towards Dynasty Creed, honestly, but this is the first entry that's going to have Rocky involved in anything, which is going to be a pretty interesting experience. And secondly, that's what makes me really more exciting, is that it's going to be directed by Maccabee Jordan, who of course plays Dynasty Creed and is a very respected actor. And <clears throat> he's going to make his director debut here, so it's going to be interesting to see how he style brings here from that first trailer we got. That, that might be an instant couple in my top 10, honestly, because again, I love I love the Rocky franchise. Aside from the first one, I definitely do enjoy all the movies in the franchise. Honestly, especially the first one. Babo and especially Creed, which I think inspires a lot of people how good it was, and I think Doc V2 was great, honestly, so it's gonna be interesting. Like, this kinda may feel like a little more the same what you expect from Rocky franchise, just with a little more different, interesting story. A sto story and probably gonna dive into more compelling themes and they're going to see Donna's really go through an interesting arc in this movie, especially along with Jonathan Majors, who got another great actor working today. So yeah, overall, all the Ryan Greens to play another great entry and another great sports movie in the Rocky franchise. I just hope it delivers. And when I'm be doing directing, honestly, I think it will. Now we get the actual only original movie on this list at number 5, and that's Hoppenheimer. I hope I pronounced that name right. But this was just one reason why this movie is on this list. In Christopher, and that this movie is, is the latest film from Christopher Nolan. And of course, you know, Christopher Nolan is, like with Diva Noob, he's one of the best crew actors working today. He's pretty much, he's one of the best wrestlers of all time. He's one of some of the best movies out there, and with all the films he's made, he has yet, in my opinion, to make a bad movie. Like, he is one of those has yet, in my opinion, to make a terrible, terrible or bad movie. Like, like all the movies are just fantastic. And for, uh, in the, my least favorite movies of his, Tenet and Falling, all of like, those so, to be good movies. That's just how fantastic Nolan's director is. A lot of his movies are in my all time favorite movies. So, I think, like, anything film he does, honestly, no matter what the story is, no matter what he decides to do, I'm always gonna be excited for it. Like, for that and not only trust and the fact that it's going to be like a World War II movie that has an incredible cast with it and that, again, that trailer really kind of holds the movie into my top 5. Now we get, now we get to my third and top 4. And coming to number 4, we have Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Chris and Dan, now we're finally getting another Indiana Jones movie after so long. Like, it's kind of been development hell, kind of been in talks for so long, and we're finally getting another Indiana Jones movie in 2023. Which is insane, I mind you. And like, uh, like, like many people, I love the, I love the Indiana Jones franchise, honestly. Even the Queen Crystal Skulls, the film I say I still enjoy, and even Temple of Doom I actually really like, but Last Crusade, the Realist Lost are in my favorite movies of all time. I love both of the movies so much. Come on now, you're gonna have a support game returning as the character. Again, again, it might be his last time actually playing the character, which then feels great. You got Phoebe Wall Bridge as in this movie as well, who's a very welcome to writer and and actress. And, he, and come on now with James with the incredible James Mangold, who's an incredible at the working today. Logan, Free for Ferrari, and a couple other movies that are also great. Like he's a great director. So when he was asked to be this movie, I think the movie was going to be a good hands, and from that trick and tease that we got a while back, this proves that we are definitely another fantastic entry in this series. And whether this is going to be the Swan Song from Harrison Ford's portrayal as the character, we shall see how that goes, but as a whole, I'm so excited to have another great, like a great entry in this very beloved franchise. And spoilers, my top three are basically superhero comic book movies, like I know, people thought that this drawing out is a base it's basically kinda of oversaturated at this point, but thanks to definitely has some exciting entries in this franchise, you can't like that. And we get to the first one at number three, and that is Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. I'm pretty sure this is one of those movies that's gonna be on everyone that's paid less because again it's this is kind of like it's going to be a game changer for the MCU. And especially it comes to it's being the beginning of phase five and the first time we're going to see Kang the freaking Conqueror here, who's probably the main antagonist here, which I'm definitely excited to see what they do with Kang here. 
who again is by Jonathan Majors, who I think is a great direct, great actor, great, uh, great actor. Find out we're going to explore more of the Quantum Realm, which I think is exciting. You got Captain Newton playing as Cassie here as well. And again, like the first three, I like the first three anime, but this one's going to be a lot more bigger and bigger scale. Not because the first two are more kind of like Plaid Cleansing movies. This one's going to be more like huge and big scale, and it's like it's going to change a lot of stuff involving in the MCU, which I'm definitely excited to see what they do here, honestly. And again, from that trip, stuff that we got to. It was going to be a, a, definitely a big one for the MCU and what's to come in later entries in the franchise. So all around, super excited. Now at number two, now I won't lie, for the longest time, this film actually was my number one actually. This film actually was my number one for the longest time. But last minute I decided to switch it up for none of me, but so number two we have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Like who isn't excited for this movie honestly? Again, I mean, the Guardians of Death is one of the most beloved things in MCU, honestly. Like, the first one is definitely one of my top five favorite MCU movies, and still is. The other one of the MCUs that I've seen the most, honestly. And I'm someone that actually does enjoy Guardians 2 and uh, how they were realized in Endgame and Infinity War, and seeing that holidays, in, I like the time in Dole and Thunder, and I especially love that holiday special that came out earlier this year that I absolutely adore. Oh, it's so much seeing these characters again and see what they're going through and dealing with. Like, that is exciting stuff. But it's gonna make this movie even more powerful because, again, this is gonna be the last time we're gonna ever see these characters. It's been confirmed, it's pretty much been known for a while. This is the last time we're gonna see some of these characters. Characters on Spider they end up dying or retiring or just leaving all behind or whatever. This is the last time we're going to see these characters. And from the first teaser that we got in, we're in for an emotional <laughs> punch of the movie. And that's why I'm, like, I'm sure we'll get some of that fun and zany humor and even some of the great music from the previous movies. But in terms of the story that I'm telling, it's like we're going to get a film that's going to be emotionally gut punching and a movie that will just leave you so. Oh my god, like. It kind of you also got Am Will Poulter playing Am Mullock, whose character has been teased since the second movie, so I'm excited to see what they do with his character as well. So all in all, again, I'm so ex I, I can't wait to see this. Yeah, I'm kind of dreading it because like, I know it's gonna, again this last time we're going to see these characters, and it's going to be one hell of an emotional movie. That, like that teaser pretty much sold me that this movie is going to be one hell of an interesting movie. And again, that one was my number one for the longest time. But now, the film that I'm excited for the most in 2023, in my personal opinion, is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. I think it was that recent trailer that came out that honestly confirmed this movie to be my... That, that was, like, I was debating between this and that recent trailer, but... Again, kind of last minute I decided to kind of switch it up and everything, because... I, I mean... Uh, no, it's something that I love Spider-Man, like it's definitely, he's my favorite superhero of all time, honestly, and like many people, I loved Into Spider-Verse when it came out, and to me, I think I was going to grow more and more greatness, and more and more, the more I think about it, it's definitely my top, and one of the Spider-Man films, like, be in the upper echelon of Spider-Man movies, but along with Spider-Man 2 and No Way Home. So, for the longest time, I've been excited to see what I'm going to do with this sequel, such with Full and Chris Brown Ryan the movie as well. And that reason trailer was just, oh my god. God, as well, this movie is also going to have a lot of, like, big references in hell. You're going to see a lot of characters from, like, you know, you're going to see a lot of different Spider-Man in this movie. And how, like, of course, you got, like, P.A.P. Parker, it's going to be also got, like, Spider-Man 2099, Spider-Woman, Spider-Punk. This movie and yeah, like, like they bring out like, a lot of different Spider-Mans from all different sorts of media. I media mean, actually, like, like, like apparently you came off from the Japanese one from the recent Spider-Man video game, the Spider-Man. Spider Hell, you get one from the spectacular Spider-Man here. Yes, he does. That Spider-Man is coming in this movie. Spider-Man says that everyone's been hoping to come back. Like that is exciting. Like you get so many different touches of Spider-Man, but. 
All right, I'm just excited to see his character's good. I'm excited to see what we're going to do with Miles Morales here. I'm excited what we're going to do with Splint Stacy here, B.O.B. Parker here. I'm just excited to see what they do with these characters again as a whole. And then, and then it's too so we're going to get, get a, we're gonna, not, it's not like it's going to be like a, basically like a big Spider-Man fanboy's dream. But I also want to tell a story that still keeps a line of what makes Spider-Man, well, Spider-Man. I think all that stuff alone is why last minute I decided to make Spider-Man Across the Metaverse my most anticipated movie of 2023. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed me discussing my 10 most anticipated movies of 2023. And again, I would love to know down below in the comment section how you guys, what you guys think, what films of 2023 are you guys excited for the most? I would definitely love to know down below in the comment section. And again, I will have a video where basically I discuss the films that, that I will discuss my most disappointing films, my most unrated movies, and my most bright movies, my worst movies, and I'm going to do them all in one video. And then if I should do very well, I'm going to discuss the, my top 20 best movies in general of 2022 as well. Just want to see like a couple more certain movies before I make that list. Because right now, I still haven't seen see the new Avatar movie, the Person Boots movie, and the new, new Line of Zam movie, and maybe possibly Babylon as well. But hey, after I see those movies, I'm going to do my actual list. So I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you guys so much for all the support and all the love in this channel. And again, I also have one more singing content coming as well. As well. I'm still going to keep that the main focus on my majority of focus on my channel. Well, I'm doing these more lists like every now and then. That's that going to be what I'm going to do for my channel because I, I said I do love music. I do want to do that a lot more, but I also like doing these videos as well. So, so the main thing I feel like I have more every now and then next year so we'll see how it goes but thank you so much for watching i appreciate it Remember, be sure to like this video be sure to subscribe be sure to follow all my patients especially my twitch which i do stream on all the questions down below i am saying one world of saying one impressions i will see you next time as always stay cool up buddy peace peace peace